thanks uh, very much for the opportunity. I won't go into all the protocols of greetings because of time constraints, but let me say that, uh, just to start, I think we've got to understand that we're really facing the mother of all crises. 70% of the fossil fuels have to stay in the earth if we're going to stay under two degrees. And at the same time, 88 billion uh, US dollars has been spent on explore, uh, ed additional exploration for fossil fuels. So you can see the problem that we, are, that we are facing. And of course, when you talk to ordinary people in South Africa, as Fazil has, has explained, no, very little so-called footprint. So why should we take climate change seriously, etc.? Except, you know, you're going to try and say, well, climate change is going to hit you. You're going to you're going to be faced by additional droughts. You're going to. It's the wrong message, quite frankly, because catastrophism is not going to mobilise people. People face in this country many serious challenges. Um, what's your name again? Salim uh, <laughs> mentioned the very high rate of unemployment that we have. It's a massive crisis. It's not. 20% uh, uh, of the, it's 40% of the working population. So all the social crises that you see of crime, of violence, gangsterism, etc., are rooted in this problem of mass unemployment. And mass unemployment in the South African economy is rooted within the particular nature of this economy as a heavily dependent fossil fuel extractivist uh, economy. And therefore, people can be mobilized, ordinary working people, can be mobilized if we say there's actually a hope in moving towards a low carbon economy. It offers uh, decent work, decent jobs, etc. And besides which, it is absolutely critical, both in South Africa and internationally, if we are going to develop the type of movements, the counter power that Lenny was talking about in the earlier session, we're going to have to find ways of bringing organized workers and social movements together, so-called uh, the alliance of workers and uh, uh, communities, if, if we're going to build the force able to put sufficient pressure on our governments to do what is necessary, and that is to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases. Now, South Africa is no small big, uh, no, you know, is no small uh, problem in this uh, issue. We're the 12th biggest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world, which is the heritage of this energy intensive economy. And of course, the common and differential uh, principle uh, of responsibility for climate change is relevant, but we in South Africa need to uh, not just, uh, uh, we just, talk about you know, our climate mitigation strategies, we also have to walk the talk. And what we are saying in the Million Climate Jobs campaign is that here we can mobilize both workers and communities uh, around the issue of the shift to moving to a low carbon economy has a huge opportunities in terms of job creation. So, for example, we know that if we're going to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases, we must move to produce more of our energy through renewable energy sources. Now, in this country, we were blessed with great wind and solar uh, resources. So why aren't we producing our energy from these uh, sources? Why are we continuing, in fact, to uh, uh, invest more and more in fossil fuels and not sufficiently in renewable energy? We know that, for example, that uh, we need to build a public transport system, not just to get polluting trucks and, and, and cars off the road, etc., but it's absolutely necessary to overcome spatial apartheid. It's absolutely necessary for giving women some security in terms of being able to get out of the ghettos of, of this country, etc. But by doing that, by building a public transport system, we help to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases. Similarly, we need to uh, ensure that our buildings are energy and resource efficient. And again, that helps us to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases. I can go on giving examples, but you can see what I'm saying. Moving to away from industrial agriculture to small-scale ag uh, organic agriculture, again, helps us to reduce emissions, but 
it, it contains a lot of work that has to be done in all of these areas. There's thousands of jobs uh, more in renewable energy uh, per kilowatt hour than in fossil fuels. There's huge amount of jobs in, in, public trans in, in developing a public transport system, etc. And all of these have knock-on downstream effects in terms of overcoming the problems of inequality and poverty in our economy and, of course, in diversifying this uh, economy that has been so uh, entrenched within uh, the mining uh, and fossil fuel sectors. So it's, it's this message that brought us to bring several trade unions and community-based organizations, NGOs, to explore the idea of a campaign for a million climate jobs, to put this at the center to say, actually, climate change shouldn't be seen as a threat, it should be seen as an opportunity. And we then set up several working groups to do concrete research on how many jobs are there in shifting to a renewable energy uh, sector. So we said, for example, um, just to give some, a lot of it is in that little pamphlet that I've put on your desk, but in, in producing 50% of our energy through renewable energy within a 10-year period would create 150,000 uh, additional jobs. Now, of course, you can't have that and then increase more fossil fuel energy. So it's a question of having to build a campaign and a movement for this. Um, Similarly, uh, the uh, uh, transport unions started to look at if, if just 10% of the population was taking these minibus taxis instead of getting into their cars, we would create 70,000 jobs, etc. So this concrete uh, evidence-based research, which you could then take and mobilize and say, here is real alternatives around which we can deal with the issue of poverty, inequality, and climate change has the possibility of bringing and cementing and consolidating these links between community-based organizations, trade unions, etc. So we've had success in several trade union federations, different unions, independent unions, and people's organizations endorsing this campaign and getting involved in a process of taking this message out to people. One of the instruments that we've used is a, a signature campaign, we call it 100,000 uh, signatures for a million climate jobs, where communities, groups, unionists are going out to different plants, getting people to sign on uh, to a, uh, in, in favor of this uh, campaign for a million climate jobs. And we say when, uh, this is more realistic in bringing the trade unions that are absolutely critical for dealing with climate change because the threat that of, of em, uh, uh, emission reduction is that we're going to lose our jobs. So how do we convince them? We say, no, yes, you may lose your jobs in the coal sector, but there are actually more jobs in the renewable energy sector. That means we've got to come up with innovative uh, strategies of how to manage that transition, because no worker is going to endorse a campaign which says, I'm going to lose my job, and then maybe there will be a job somewhere else. You've got to set up Something like you have in, in Europe, often you have a national health services. You all, you need a sort of climate change services, a state body that can uh, organize a transition, give people the training, and uh, redirect them to uh, these jobs. And that's why we talk in the climate jobs campaign, mainly in terms of public sector jobs. In, uh, so when we talk about climate jobs itself, we're, we're defining it as jobs that help to bring down our emissions of greenhouse gases and which build the resilience of our communities to withstand the impact of climate change. We don't talk about green jobs. Green jobs is too vague, it can mean anything. But climate jobs are those that help us to bring down our emissions of greenhouse gases. And we say government must create the, uh, the means to do that. Um, and essentially, we have people now out in uh, your plants in PE, at, at uh, Mercedes, at Ford, etc., going around to workers. We've been doing work with uh, coal miners uh, and getting their endorsement uh, for the campaign. And I think that uh, gives a 
bit of an indication of what can be done. If we treat this issue as an environmental issue and we depend on environmental consciousness, I'm afraid in this country we're going to mobilize a few middle class people and we're not going to have the uh, social force that is necessary to get our governments to bring down the emissions of greenhouse gases. Now if we focus at a state level, at a national level, and instead of running to the multilateral cops, uh, we're going to have more success because what we win here, our governments will be pushing at an international level. So we're not saying don't work at an international level, but the focus on climate change mitigation has to be at what we do at home. And that's where I'm going to stop. Thank you very much.